Well, it's time for Back in the Library, and this is a Father's Day um, special story time. So um, we're going to find out how a father helps his son um, get rid of um, his son's enemy by making enemy pie, and also um, what to do. Family helps another boy decide how to handle best friend trouble. So let's enjoy. It should have been a perfect summer. My dad helped me build a tree house in our backyard. My sister was at camp for three whole weeks, and I was on the best baseball team in town. It should have been a perfect summer, but it wasn't. It was all good until Jeremy Ross moved into the neighborhood, right next door to my best friend Stanley. I did not like Jeremy Ross. He laughed at me when he struck me out in a baseball game. He had a party on his trampoline, and I wasn't even invited, but my best friend Stanley was. Jeremy Ross was the one and only person on my enemy list. I never even had an enemy list until he moved into the neighborhood. But as soon as he came along, I needed one. I hung it up in my treehouse where Jeremy Ross was not allowed to go. Dad understood stuff like enemies. He told me that when he was my age, he had enemies too. But he knew of a way to get rid of them. I asked him to tell me how. Tell you how? I'll show you how. He said, "He pulled a really old recipe book off the kitchen shelf. Inside, there was a worn-out scrap of paper with faded writing. Dad held it up and squinted at it. Enemy pie," he said, satisfied. You may be wondering what exactly is enemy pie. I was wondering too, but Dad said the recipe was so secret he couldn't even tell me. I decided it must be magic. I begged him to tell me something, anything. I will tell you this," he said. "Enemy pie is the fastest known way to get rid of enemies." Now, of course, this got my mind working. What kinds of things, disgusting things, would I put into a pie for an enemy? I brought Dad some weeds from the garden, but he just shook his head. I brought him earthworms and rocks, but he didn't think he need those. I gave him the gum I'd been chewing all morning. He gave it right back to me. I went out to play, alone. I shot baskets until the ball got stuck on the roof. I threw a boomerang that never came back to me, and all the while. I listened to the sounds of my dad chopping and stirring and blending the ingredients of enemy pie. This could be a great summer after all. Enemy pie was going to be awful. I tried to imagine how horrible it must smell, or worse yet, what it would look like. But when I was in the backyard looking for ladybugs, I smelled something really, really, really good. And as far as I could tell, it was coming from our kitchen. I was a bit confused. I went in to ask Dad what was wrong. Enemy pie shouldn't smell this good, but Dad was smart. If enemy pie smelled bad, your enemy would never eat it, he said. I could tell he'd made enemy pie before. The buzzer rang. And Dad put on the oven mitts and pulled the pie out of the oven. 
It looked like plain old pie. It looked good enough to eat. I was catching on. But still, I wasn't really sure how this enemy pie worked. What exactly did it do to the enemies? Maybe it made their hair fall out, or their breasts stinky. Maybe it made bullies cry. I asked Dad, but he was no help. He wouldn't tell me a thing. But while the pie cooled, he filled me in on my job. He talked quietly. There is one part of enemy pie that I can't do. In order for it to work, you need to spend the day with your enemy. Even worse, you have to be nice to him. It's not easy, but that's the only way that enemy pie can work. Are you sure you want to go through with this? Of course I was. It sounded horrible. It was scary, but it was worth a try. All I had to do was spend one day with Jeremy Ross. Then he'd be out of my hair for the rest of my life. I rode my bike to his house and knocked on the door. When Jeremy opened the door, he seemed surprised. He stood on the other side of the screen door and looked at me, waiting for me to say something. I was nervous. Can you play? I asked. He looked confused. I'll go ask my mom, he said. He came back with his shoes in his hand. His mom walked around the corner to say hello. You boys stay out of trouble, she said, smiling. We rode bikes for a while and played on the trampoline. Then we made some water balloons and threw them at the neighbor girls, but we missed. Jeremy's mom made us lunch. After lunch, we went over to my house. It was strange, but I was kind of having fun with my enemy. He almost seemed nice. But of course, I couldn't tell Dad that, since he had worked so hard to make this enemy pie. Jeremy Ross liked my basketball hoop. He said he wished he had a basketball hoop, but they didn't have room for one. I let him win a game, just to be nice. Jeremy Ross knew how to throw a boomerang. He threw it, and it came right back to him. I threw it, and it went over my house and into the backyard. When we climbed over the fence to find it, the first thing Jeremy noticed was my treehouse. My treehouse was my treehouse. I was the boss. If my sister wanted in, I didn't have to let her. If my dad wanted in, I didn't have to let him. And if Jeremy wanted in, can we go in it? He asked. I knew he was going to ask me that, but he was the top person, the only person on my enemy list, and enemies aren't allowed in my treehouse. But he did teach me how to throw a boomerang, and he did have me over for lunch, and he did let me play on his trampoline. He wasn't being a very good enemy. Okay. I said, but hold on. I climbed up ahead of him and tore the enemy list off the wall. I had a checkerboard and some cards in the treehouse, and we played games until my dad called us down for dinner. We pretended we didn't hear him, and when he came up to get us, we tried to hide from him, but somehow he found us. Dad made us macaroni and cheese for dinner, my favorite. It was Jeremy's favorite too. Maybe Jeremy Ross wasn't so bad after all. I was beginning to think that maybe we should just forget about enemy pie. But sure enough, after dinner, Dad brought out the pie. I watched as he cut the pie into eight thick slices. Dad, I said, it sure is nice having a new friend in the neighborhood. I was trying to get his attention. And trying to tell him that Jeremy Ross was no longer my enemy, but Dad only smiled and nodded. I think he thought I was just pretending. Dad dished up three plates side by side with big pieces of pie and giant scoops of ice cream. He passed one to me and one to Jeremy. Whoa, Jeremy said, looking at the pie. My dad never makes pies like this. It was at this point that I panicked. I didn't want Jeremy to eat enemy pie. 
He was my friend. I couldn't let him eat it. Jeremy, don't eat it. It's bad pie. I think it's poisonous or something. Jeremy's fork stopped before in his mouth. He crumpled his eyebrows and looked at me funny. I felt relieved. I had just saved his life. I was a hero. If it's so bad, Jeremy asked, then why has your dad already eaten half of it? I turned to look at my dad. Sure enough, he was eating enemy pie. Good stuff, he mumbled through a mouthful, and that was all he said. I sat there watching them eat enemy pie for a few seconds. Dad was laughing, Jeremy was happily eating, and neither of them was losing any hair. It seemed safe enough, so I took a tiny taste. Enemy pie was delicious! After dessert, Jeremy rode his bike home, but not before inviting me over to play in his trampoline in the morning. He said he'd teach me how to flip. As for enemy pie, I still don't know how to make it. I still wonder if enemies really do hate it, or if their hair falls out, or if their breath turns bad. But I don't know if I'll ever get an answer, because I just lost my best enemy. So I hope you enjoyed that story about how to get rid of an enemy, the best way to get rid of an enemy. And we have another story. Um, it's called Best Friend Troubles. And um, this animal learns how to deal with when you're having trouble with your best friend, how can, what can you do about that? He asks different members of his family, talks to them about it. They give him some really good um, ideas on how to deal with um, feelings. So let's, let's enjoy that movie as well. When Lizzie threw her ball, it flew up and up over the fence at the end of Hannah's yard. Ha! Lizzie said. I bet you can't throw yours that far. Yes, I can, said Hannah. She took a deep breath and threw as hard as she could. The ball went high into the air but plopped down on the grass before it reached the fence. See, said Lizzie, I told you so. Hannah stomped into the house and slammed the door. No one was in the kitchen, but loud noises were coming from the basement. Hannah found her big brother Josh down there, building birdhouses. "'What's up?' he said. "'I thought you were playing with Lizzie in the yard.' "'Lizzie,' said Hannah. "'Ha!' She sat on the workbench and sighed. "'I thought you two were friends,' said Josh." Not any more, said Hannah. Lizzie brags. She said she could throw the ball farther than I could. And did she? She did, said Hannah. But the sun was in my eyes, so it wasn't fair. She says she can swing higher than I can, too. Well, can't she? asked Josh. No, said Hannah. She always starts before I have a chance to pump my feet. Hi. Sounds like best friend trouble Hi. to me. Well, we're we're um, enjoying a, a story. All right. Okay, so why don't we start it from the beginning, okay? So this is called Best Friend's Trouble. Did you ever have trouble with your best friend? Yes. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> so, so let's enjoy. Play the story. <laughs> When Lizzie threw her ball, it flew up and up over the fence at the end of Hannah's yard. Yeah. Ha, Lizzie said. I bet you can't throw yours that far. Oh, yes, I can, said Hannah. She took a deep breath and threw as hard as she could. The ball went high into the air but 
plopped down on the grass before it reached the fence. See, said Lizzie, I told you so. Hannah stomped into the house and slammed the door. No one was in the kitchen, but loud noises were coming from the basement. Hannah found her big brother Josh down there, building bird houses. What's up? he said. I thought you were playing with Lizzie in the yard. Lizzie, said Hannah. Ha! She sat on the workbench and sighed. I thought you two were friends, said Josh. Not any more, said Hannah. Lizzie brags. She said she could throw the ball farther than I could. And did she? She did, said Hannah. But the sun was in my eyes, so it wasn't fair. She says she can swing higher than I can, too. Well, can't she? asked Josh. <laughs> no, said Hannah. She always starts before I have a chance to pump my feet. Sounds like best friend trouble to me, said Josh. Maybe you can pound in a few nails. That will make you feel better. He gave Hannah a hammer, a block of wood, and a handful of nails. Yeah. Wham! 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 Hannah pounded the nails into the wood. Josh was right. She did feel a bit better. She decided to look for her dad. Her dad was in the living room, practicing for a concert that evening. Hannah came in to listen. She sighed a long, drawn-out sigh that stretched as long as the note her dad played on his clarinet. The music stopped. I thought you were playing outside with Lizzie, her dad said. Not any more, said Hannah. Do you know what Lizzie said? No, but I guess you're going to tell me, said her dad. She said I'm not allowed to sing in her backyard. But when she's in our yard, she hollers like an old crow. I think I've heard crows singing in both yards, <laughs> said Hannah's dad. Sounds like best friend trouble to me. She's not my best friend, said Hannah. She's mean, and she makes me tired. Why don't you dig into the music box, said her dad. Choose any instrument you like. Hannah dug into the box and chose two sets of finger cymbals. She slipped her fingers through the elastic loops on the back of the cymbals. She clanged the cymbals together until they rang out loudly. Music made her feel even better. She decided to look for her mom. Her mom was working in the study. Mom, said Hannah, do you remember when I went to Lizzie's for lunch yesterday? I remember, said her mom. Well, Lizzie was chewing with her mouth open, and when I told her she didn't have good manners, she called me a dum-dum. Maybe Lizzie was hoping you hadn't noticed the way she was chewing, said her mom. Sounds like best friend trouble to me. She's not my best friend, said Hannah. I don't need a best friend. Here, said her mom. Why don't you sit at the end of my desk and draw a picture? Maybe you could give the picture to Lizzie and be friends again. Hannah chose a large sheet of paper and a bright orange crayon. She drew a picture of Lizzie wearing a silly-looking dress. She covered the dress with orange balloons and gave Lizzie clunky shoes and wild orange hair. It was such a silly drawing it made Hannah laugh and laugh. She decided she'd better not give the picture to Lizzie. Because she wasn't finished complaining, Hannah went upstairs to check on her hamster, Octavia. Octavia had been given her name because she liked to do everything eight times. Hannah sat on the edge of the bed while Octavia tore a piece of newspaper into eight tiny strips. At school the other day, she told Octavia, Lizzie said she might pick Tate to be her best friend instead of me. Octavia gnawed as if she were listening carefully. And that's not all. Lizzie says her dog Lulu is smarter than you. Octavia glared, then filled the pouches in her cheeks with eight seeds. Hannah went to the window and looked down into Lizzie's yard next door. Lizzie was sitting all alone on her back step. Hannah went downstairs and out the front door. She sat all alone on her front step. That Lizzie, she muttered, she makes me feel like shouting. If Mom tells me to wear a jacket, Lizzie is allowed to wear short sleeves. If I have to come in, Lizzie is allowed to stay out. Her birthday is even before mine, and she gets to turn six before I do. What did you say? 
said Lizzie. She was peeking around the corner of Hannah's house. I said, go away, said Hannah. I'm tired of having a best friend. We could play again, said Lizzie. You could wiggle my loose tooth. No, thanks, said Hannah. I have a loose tooth of my own. Anyway, you're mean. You were mean to me, too, said Lizzie. When? When the training wheels came off your bike, said Lizzie. You called me a baby because mine are still on. Oh, said Hannah. I forgot about the bike. You ran ahead on the way home from kindergarten, too, said Lizzie. Even after I asked you to wait. You could have run, too, said Hannah. You always win, said Lizzie. You're a faster runner. Mm. I am, said Hannah. She thought for a moment. So I am good at some things, and you are good at others. Maybe we can be friends after all. Best friends, said Lizzie. Why not, said Hannah. We might argue again, said Lizzie. I know, said Hannah. They sat on the step and thought about this. Do you want to play ball again, said Lizzie. Not right now, said Hannah. Let's play something nobody's better at. <laughs> How about pretending we could pretend to be best friend monsters? We could be monster partners, said Hannah. That sounds like fun, said Lizzie. They went into Hannah's house and up to her room. Octavia was so happy to see them, she ran around her wheel eight times and did a belly flop. Hannah and Lizzie lifted the lid of the craft table and reached inside. They filled their arms with paper, crayons, paints, and brushes, and carried everything downstairs to the kitchen table. They began to make monster masks. Hannah and Lizzie cut and pasted and colored and painted. While they helped each other and fixed their masks, they sang and sang. Everyone in the house could hear them. The two best friends sang so hard they sounded like two loud and happy <laughs> crows. So, what did you think of the story? Hmm? What did you, what did you, what did they do? She had, they were having trouble with the best friends. Why did they, what were they having trouble about? Do you remember? Yeah, so... They were mad. So, because one person did one thing well, another person did the other thing well. And so, what what is that word? When somebody does something better than you, and you get angry at them for it. Is there a word for that? Does it mean jealous? Did he say that she was jealous? Yeah. So, how did they fix it? How did they fix it? They what? They told. Talked about it, so they found out that they both hurt each other's feelings, right? And so they, what was, how did they get out? And what did they do? The last thing they did, they did what? Yeah, they made the game that they had it came up with a game that neither one would be best at, right? They were taking masks and. And then they had fun. So, so yeah. So, what did you think of the story? Oh, life. <laughs> life that I'm living right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's what I hear at home. Uh, what? Life that I hear. Well, what I hear about friends, oh. girls. I got an 11 year old. And that's, he ain't my friend no more. Oh, mm -hmm. I know. Yeah, <laughs> you know. And that's all I hear. But the fact that they have to keep talking and talking mm -hmm. and talking about them tells you what? That they are free. Yeah. <laughs> they're just sad. Yeah. And I thought I thought it was interesting what they uh, the brother said it's just a tiny nail. Uh, nail do something, yeah. And and then the dad said to to do play an instrument. Play an instrument and, and yeah, they, draw a picture of it. Yeah. yeah. So, so those are all good ways of doing it. So the whole idea is get your feelings out, out, yeah. out there in some way. So, yeah. So that's one. And then um, that was a good story. And then um, 
And then there's another story that we did. Uh, uh, share this. We did. This is called um, Enemy Pie. It should have been a perfect summer. My dad helped me build a treehouse in our backyard. My sister was at camp for three whole weeks, and I was on the best baseball team in town. It should have been a perfect summer, but it wasn't. It was all good until Jeremy Ross moved into the neighborhood, right next door to my best friend Stanley. I did not like Jeremy Ross. He laughed at me when he struck me out in a baseball game. He had a party on his trampoline, and I wasn't even invited, but my best friend Stanley was. Jeremy Ross was the one and only person on my enemy list. I never even had an enemy list until he moved into the neighborhood. But as soon as he came along, I needed one. I hung it up in my treehouse where Jeremy Ross was not allowed to go. Dad understood stuff like enemies. He told me that when he was my age, he had enemies too. But he knew of a way to get rid of them. I asked him to tell me how. Tell you how? I'll show you how. He said. He pulled a really old recipe book off the kitchen shelf. Inside, there was a worn-out scrap of paper with faded writing. Dad held it up and squinted at it. Enemy pie. He said, satisfied. You may be wondering what exactly is enemy pie. I was wondering too, but Dad said the recipe was so secret he couldn't even tell me. I decided it must be magic. I begged him to tell me something, anything. I will tell you this, he said. Enemy pie is the fastest known way to get rid of enemies. Now, of course, this got my mind working. What kinds of things, disgusting things, would I put into a pie for an enemy? I brought Dad some weeds from the garden, but he just shook his head. I brought him earthworms and rocks, but he didn't think he'd need those. I gave him the gum I'd been chewing all morning. He gave it right back to me to shut into the roof. I threw a boomerang that never came back to me. And all the while, I listened to the sounds of my dad chopping and stirring and blending the ingredients of enemy pie. This could be a great summer after all. Enemy pie was going to be awful. I tried to imagine how horrible it must smell, or worse yet, what it would look like. But when I was in the backyard, Looking for ladybugs, I smelled something really, really, really good. And as far as I could tell, it was coming from our kitchen. I was a bit confused. I went in to ask Dad what was wrong. Enemy pie shouldn't smell this good. But Dad was smart. If enemy pie smelled bad, your enemy would never eat it, he said. I could tell he'd made enemy pie before. The buzzer rang, and Dad put on the oven mitts and pulled the pie out of the oven. It looked like plain old pie. It looked good enough to eat. I was catching on. But still, I wasn't really sure how this enemy pie worked. What exactly did it do to the enemies? Maybe it made their hair fall out, or their breasts stinky. Maybe it made bullies cry. I asked Dad, but he was no help. He wouldn't tell me a thing. But while the pie cooled, he filled me in on my job. He talked quietly. There is one part of enemy pie that I can't do. In order for it to work, you need to spend the day with your enemy. Even worse, 
You have to be nice to him. It's not easy. But that's the only way that enemy pie can work. Are you sure you want to go through with this? Of course I was. It sounded horrible. It was scary. But it was worth a try. All I had to do was spend one day with Jeremy Ross. Then he'd be out of my hair for the rest of my life. I rode my bike to his house and knocked on the door. When Jeremy opened the door, he seemed surprised. He stood on the other side of the screen door and looked at me, waiting for me to say something. I was nervous. Can you play? I asked. He looked confused. I'll go ask my mom, he said. He came back with his shoes in his hand. His mom walked around the corner to say hello. You boys stay out of trouble, she said, smiling. We rode bikes for a while and played on the trampoline. Then we made some water balloons and threw them at the neighbor girls, but we missed. Jeremy's mom made us lunch. After lunch, we went over to my house. It was strange, but I was kind of having fun with my enemy. He almost seemed nice. But of course, I couldn't tell Dad that, since he had worked so hard to make this enemy pie. Jeremy Ross liked my basketball hoop. He said he wished he had a basketball hoop, but they didn't have room for one. I let him win a game, just to be nice. Jeremy Ross knew how to throw a boomerang. He threw it, and it came right back to him. I threw it, and it went over my house and into the backyard. When we climbed over the fence to find it, the first thing Jeremy noticed was my treehouse. My treehouse was my treehouse. I was the boss. If my sister wanted in, I didn't have to let her. If my dad wanted in, I didn't have to let him. And if Jeremy wanted in? Can we go in it? He asked. I knew he was going to ask me that. But he was the top person, the only person on my enemy list. And enemies aren't allowed in my treehouse. But he did teach me how to throw a boomerang. And he did have me over for lunch. And he did let me play on his trampoline. He wasn't being a very good enemy. Okay. I said, but hold on. I climbed up ahead of him and tore the enemy list off the wall. I had a checkerboard and some cards in the treehouse, and we played games until my dad called us down for dinner. We pretended we didn't hear him, and when he came up to get us, we tried to hide from him, but somehow he found us. Dad made us macaroni and cheese for dinner, my favorite. It was Jeremy's favorite, too. Maybe Jeremy Ross wasn't so bad after all. I was beginning to think that maybe we should just forget about enemy pie. But sure enough, after dinner, Dad brought out the pie. I watched as he cut the pie into eight thick slices. Dad, I said, it sure is nice having a new friend in the neighborhood. I was trying to get his attention and trying to tell him that Jeremy Ross was no longer my enemy. But Dad only smiled and nodded. I think he thought I was just pretending. Dad dished up three plates side by side, with big pieces of pie and giant scoops of ice cream. He passed one to me and one to Jeremy. Whoa, Jeremy said, looking at the pie. My dad never makes pies like this. It was at this point that I panicked. I didn't want Jeremy to eat enemy pie. He was my friend. I couldn't let him eat it. Jeremy, don't eat it. It's bad pie. I think it's poisonous or something. Jeremy's fork stopped before reaching his mouth. He crumpled his eyebrows and looked at me funny. I felt relieved. I had just saved his life. I was a hero. If it's so bad, Jeremy asked, then why has your dad already eaten half of it? I turned to look at my dad. Sure enough, he was eating enemy pie. Good stuff. He mumbled through a mouthful, and that was all he said. I sat there watching them eat enemy pie for a few seconds. Dad was laughing, 
Jeremy was happily eating, and neither of them was losing any hair. It seemed safe enough, so I took a tiny taste. Enemy pie was delicious. After dessert, Jeremy rode his bike home, but not before inviting me over to play in his trampoline in the morning. He said he'd teach me how to flip. As for enemy pie, I still don't know how to make it. I still wonder if enemies really do hate it, or if their hair falls out, or if their breath turns bad. But I don't know if I'll ever get an answer, because I just lost my best enemy. Dad was pretty smart, huh? Yeah. Yeah, if you play with somebody all day, and you have fun and you eat with them. No. That's the best way to get rid of an enemy, right? <laughs> so, um, the craft is we're going to make um, make a Father's Day card, and we can also make a hero. Uh, so I'm gonna get some crayon, um, crayons and stuff. Good stickers if you want, whatever you want to do. You make a hero badge. You want? Yeah, you can make a hero badge for anybody. It doesn't have to be. It's just Father's Day. It makes sense for Father's Day. Uh, but you can make a hero for anybody. Yeah. He did laugh at 
at him when he uh, struck him out. Is that a good thing he knew? Yeah, 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 yeah. You're playing the game, it's something that's going to happen. Yeah. He didn't want to cry. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good point. Yeah. Well, nobody can lie at least. Yeah. I mean, some people good sports and some people poor sports. You just got to. Are you going to. Okay. You got to You got to be as low as low as you play the game. It's part of the game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just like life, right? Yeah. Sometimes yeah. things go your way. Sometimes they don't. Today was the last full day of school. Was it? Was it? Now we only have um, two days. Now I only have two days left, and um, it only um, ends in six hours. Oh, really? Sad face? Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. I don't know if Nick has Friday. I don't know. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. I know I don't. Wait a second. I'm going to do it. Because you went to here, 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 you went to it doesn't really matter what they say. I'm like, I'm like, okay. I'm, I'm like, yeah. Lots of other kids have to do, so. No, I'm going to be dead. No, I'm just going to be dead. Oh, that's pretty. Yeah, we're going to be quiet if it's <laughs> I don't get being with the point of looking when like no one in your family is even like on that team. Like how do you even start voting? And like just like just how do you even like vote? Who feels better? Like I don't I just don't get it. You guys like how the other way around like the team that maybe like the colors better. Uh the colors. Sure. Mm -hmm. Oh, boy. 
Oh, they went to school. Yeah. 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 You go to school that you go to, you're more likely to root for that team. Yeah, yeah. Or if you're <laughs> you Stephanie, you know, yeah. do you go to Michigan State? No. Oh. Because I've been there a lot, though. Um, Mrs. Mrs. Giles was here for the Oh, you do you do wish you went to Michigan State? No, I just like the green better than the blue. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Seriously? Yeah. Blue, my favorite color. Oh, okay. <laughs> like you said, seriously. Yeah. Oh, Michigan State, those are good. But, those are good. Yeah. but they both are blue in it. <laughs> <laughs> they both are blue in it. Michigan, Michigan, Michigan State don't have blue in it. Okay, they're not color. Green and white. Green and white? Yeah. No, it's green. Wait a second. So why do you like Michigan State? I do. Like it's just because it doesn't have a blue in it. I mean, because I, I like the underdog. They, they, they yeah. have like an underdog. Underdog? Yeah, they, 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 they propose to lose all the time. Mm -hmm. But they don't. I, I like yeah, them. I, I don't guess with a two-game two I don't guess. I like to see somebody's face. I like the, the little brother to win sometimes. What do you mean the little brother? They call him the little brother. What? Michigan State? Yeah. From Michigan, yeah. They're scrappers. They may not face the film. Yeah, they play hard. They play hard, yeah. They don't they, give they, up. They, you know? they can have a sorry team, but when they play Michigan, they play hard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Choose. Okay. 
but then they're really heavy, so they're going to have to replace the road. Right. Uh, they're really, really heavy. So, and that's and that's Even all. Paper. Yeah. So that and that's all. Um, you know, oil. I mean, they use that the roads for the, the roads. They they use that whatever that they use. But anyway, that's all. Take concrete. <laughs> you know. Yeah. So. Yeah. So I don't know. So if you spend more money on right. road and maintaining the roads, I mean, we already have a lot of trouble right. the roads. Right. And then that asphalt and all that stuff, that's all uh, oil and base. So yeah. I don't but know. You, you don't need it. But I guess it's going to be like little steps. We're going to be making little steps and then eventually, I guess. The, the, the rich don't get it first. <laughs> no people get it. You know? One time, um, um, back, you know, uh, waste, back in waste where they didn't have, before they had all the pipes right. and everything, people would have a slot pot they would put under the bed and when they got up in the morning after they were done, they throw it out the window. Ooh, and if you're walking under something, it's like, 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 it's like if you, they live, most people live on a farm. Mm -hmm. The lives before they got so I, So the animals would go in and out of the house with them. So that, uh, you know, they had chickens or whatever animals, whatever they okay. had, would go, would walk in and out of their house. And of course, they didn't use that. Yeah, really right. But can you imagine living in that period of time? Mm -hmm. yeah. So we have made, really made some huge uh, advances. Yeah. Um, like iPhones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. iPhones. I mean, those are. They used to be like in the '60s when the first uh, computer. Right. It would take about as big as this whole area of the youth department, and it would add, right. subtract, multiply, and divide. And that's what it did. And that's that's how all it did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but it was it was working. It was, it was, it was thinking itself. It was, it was doing it itself. It was a computer. Yeah. yeah. To do call. What? Can you call it? <laughs> right? Oh, no. Hmm. No, none of that. It just adds, subtract, multiply, divide. So, you tell me that all of that things Rick Virginia could do. And that's how big it was. And it was huge, yeah. But it, that was, you know, that's technology. That was 40, that was 60, yeah. 60, 60 years ago. It was in the 60s. And they came up with the first computer. I don't like that noise. I yeah. would smash it on the ground yeah. and it would keep making that noise. Yeah. I would smash it on the ground yeah. and it would keep making that noise. It would be like, 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 it I guess it was Wi Fi. It was, it was, okay, hold on, hold on. It was somebody. The whole time. Yeah. The, the, the phone that Jack. That oh, I know. Oh, that, oh, that, oh, over the, over the phone. And then those, <laughs> those weird sounds. Sound, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And then it would, it would cut off. Yeah. Right, so often. Yeah. But I remember I had worked for a company and they had a central computer and it's like five or six times a day the whole system would crash yeah, and you'd have to kick saving your stuff because if it crashed you'd lose everything. Yeah. It was it was, it was and that was it was, in the eighties. Yeah, that wasn't yeah, like I said that wasn't that long ago. Okay, hold up, hold up. So um what was that? Um what was that? you guys just live with a phone that um could not even hold on. And you can barely do anything with yeah. it. Oh, yeah. Could you call information? Call, call, call. 
Like you, like you boot call yourself, like you boot yourself. What do you mean? Call information. <laughs> because when you made a phone call, you didn't get the other person you were calling. You got the operator. Yeah. And she connected you to the other person, person you were calling at one point. And, and then you also had a party line. So a party line? Yeah. yeah. So, so did it be dancing on the phone or something? <laughs> no. So. Uh, like say maybe houses around you in your neighborhood, they would have the same line. So if somebody, one of your neighbors was on the phone, you, you, you could hear everything they were saying. Yeah, yeah. So you pick up and you could hear, or you had oh, to wait. You would have to wait. I only know that from Scooby Doo. I can only know that from Scooby Doo. Yeah, Target Delivery, yeah. Because they will play one and they will have to wait that that's all. They they will live in the big city and the other people have phones, but some don't find them. Mm -hmm. Um they have dice house phones. <laughs> yeah, and if old. grandma can just pick up on them. Yeah, and hear everything they're saying. So you I don't know, there was some always somebody in the neighborhood that always was doing it on it. Yeah, 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 didn't do that. Like, 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 someone's like, call. Oh, someone's yeah. calling. Oh yeah, and they'd pick it up real quiet mm -hmm. so you wouldn't hear it. Like they would hear all the gossip of what was going on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, yeah. And they didn't even know. <laughs> but then you could tell who, who it was most of the time when they like came in. I bet that was him. Oh, yeah, you would know. I bet that was my phone. I bet that was my phone. Yeah, you were cute. I was under my phone. How dare you look at me? I'm and at first it just had a little cord, and then they made this gigantic cord that you could turn your mind in the whole house. Yeah, you had to get twisted. Yeah, you could, twist yeah, you know, it never fix it. You could never fix it after you get all tangled up. So you just try and then you have to get another one. And then you have, if you had more than one teenager, oh, they tell you get off the phone because they're expecting a call. Oh, and yes, 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 they're far away. Dad, I have a challenge for you. you know? I dare you to sing. The sea shanty, the sea shanty, <laughs> the sea shanty. The sea shanty. I don't know that song. I don't know it. I don't know it. Do you? Never heard it. Yeah. 
have no from 2022, right? Dad, you, you still can just hold me through the song a lot. I know, but I'm holding on out to ego. Ego. Okay, well, we're going to finish up because the library is going to close at 8 o'clock. So, you know, we're going to finish this up at the end of the day. So, uh, okay, well, yeah, happier. Okay, um, even now, um, no one got this. Okay, Miss Bandy, you can go here with the words.
Well, he does. Oh, okay. But yeah, this is me. Watch you too. <laughs>